Thank you so much for coming today. It's great to see so many people here. I mean, this agenda is very much about bringing PLC and place together because those two things together are unstoppable. Mark my words, they're unstoppable. And you heard the music backing that video. There is a great feeling about this place at the moment. And what this is about is making sure that we widen the place leadership, that we get you guys on board with place leading this place as well, because that way we can make sure that that feeling continues and gets deeper and stronger as we move forward. It's very much about you helping the place to think and crucially to act differently. And I think that's something that certainly the local authority recognises it can't do on its own. It's got to be done uh, in partnership. And our role, really, these sessions are hopefully going to be anchored by really great speakers. And then you'll get me doing a bit of filling from time to time. And that's about making sure that you are equipped, that you know about what's going on in Rochdale. Because you can only represent the place positively if you've got that kind of broad understanding of what's happening. Um, and that can be difficult because you know, we understand that you come in to your business, you do great work, you go home again, and you often get completely focused 110% on making sure that, that business is a success. And of course, that's fundamentally the main thing that this place needs, successful businesses. But if you can find a bit of space to then help us to promote the place, particularly outside the borough, and to make it a business destination going forward, then that will help the place and it'll help you do better business from the place, I think. Okay, we'll start with the town centre. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the things you saw in the video and just bring, bring out in words a little more uh, sort of the, around those programmes. The town centre is undergoing a £250 million, or it's towards the end, actually, of a £250 million investment. And that includes some of the things that I hope you will already have seen, it includes the council offices, because uh, part of that building was about trying to bring some um, impact into the town centre. It, wasn't, it was partly about making us more efficient and saving money by putting people in, in one building rather than dozens of buildings across the borough. But it was partly about adding value to the town centre, being a catalyst for change in the town centre. Um, the Metrolink trams there, that was part of this programme, along with the interchange that it runs in and out of. Um, the river reopening was a, a later part of, of that uh, programme. And the last part of that investment jigsaw is on site now, and that's Rochdale Riverside. That's an £80 million project, and that's the last bit of that £250 million. Um, and I'm not going to talk very much about Rochdale Riverside, because um, uh, Mike Smith's here, who's our development partner on Rochdale Riverside, he'll talk a bit more about the programme. What I did want to mention, just briefly though, is um, what Rochdale Riverside is doing in terms of some of the people working in there. The main contractor is Wilmot Dixon, and they've really impressed me as a contractor that um, not off, not, it's not always usual that a contractor says what they're going to do and then does it. And Wilmot Dixon have definitely done that, not just in terms of keeping the, the, the job on programme, but in terms of some of the things that ma matter to places around people. So they've put a lot of effort into their corporate social responsibility. Um, the, they've actually uh, put, in, put in place, Danielle, I think she's here, a, 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 a community liaison worker who talks to schools, who keeps communicating with, with, with the local community to make sure they feel part of it and indeed are part of it. They've made sure that there's been local employment. They've, they've employed people that were formerly from the armed forces that are, are locals. And they've also made sure that they're employing contractors from, from the local area. I think... Um, We've got um, the uh, Hovington, I think. I think Hovington are here. I think um, uh, Nick Green's here today. And they're a civil engineering uh, contractor, local contractor that have been brought in and are busy on that site uh, right now. And so that's the kind of thing we need to do is get best benefit from all those kind of investments. Um, you also, I hope, are aware that we're, we're close to opening a new indoor market building. And again, that's uh, been done by a local developer, H. H. Bell and Son, I think Chris Bell's here this morning as well, 
who have done, it's not open yet, so you can't see it, but you'll be able to see it soon. They've done a fantastic job. It's probably going to be the best, it's only a small building, a small indoor market, but it's probably going to be the best quality indoor market building in the universe, not just the country, isn't it? It is a fantastic job, let me tell you. Um, so, there's lots of those things going in the town centre. Going back to Rochdale Riverside, there's a link that I just wanted to draw out here. A few years ago, we couldn't have dreamt that Rochdale could have risked inviting a dinosaur into town. Because if we had, we wouldn't have been able to, to, to protect ourselves from all the jokes that we'd have got. But we're now confident, we're getting our gates now as a town, and we're confident enough to have invited um, Dippy. Dippy. Have you heard Dippy the dinosaur? You probably had dinner underneath Dippy when he was in the Natural History Museum. Uh, Diplodocus he is. Um, and he was in the Natural History Museum, and they've changed that main exhibit in the main hall there to a, a big whale. Um, but what they did was they sent Dippy out on tour and invited Bids uh, to uh, host Dippy. And there are eight places in the UK that have got to host Dippy over the next period. Uh, we're one of them. All of them are in museum kind of settings, but Rochdale being Rochdale, we had to do it differently is going in the council offices. Luckily, the offices were designed for him because they've got this big gap up in the middle so you can get him in. Um, and that's going to be, Dippy's going to be there from February 2020 and that's going to coincide with when Rochdale Riverside opens across the road a little later in the year. Um, and it's got a really exciting uh, education programme linked with it, a, a STEM Edu uh, focused education programme, but it's also a massive visitor attraction. What nobody really realised until Dippy went out on the road is just what a rock star he is. Because when people went to the Natural History Museum, they went to see the Natural, Natural Hist History Museum with its, with its massive number of exhibits. So nobody quite understood how important that particular exhibit was. But just it went, his first place was it, that he went to was in Dorset. It was a museum that gets um, about 40,000 visitors a year it got 153,000 visitors in two and a bit months. So we're expecting, we're targeting something like 300,000 visitors to see this exhibit in 2020. And that's just something that, and part of that is about trying to, we've tried to set about doing things that you wouldn't expect in this town, you wouldn't expect from Rochdale. Um, but we're not stopping there. We've got a phase two of investment in the town centre, another 150 million pounds, so a total investment of 400 million. And that's going to be focused on a mixture of heritage, um, public realm, continuing the public realm work we've done, and also focusing on a residential uh, offer in the town centre, which, is, which we don't really have at the moment. So this building is going to be a major part of that. We've got a £17 million investment programme due to start in the not-too-distant future in this building. This building is a fantastic heritage asset, but it's really difficult to make it work today. And I think we've got a really good example of that to this morning because we sat in this fantastic room. Just look at this room. Just look at the heritage that we've got around the walls. But we're having to work with this clunky IT and the electrics are a bit iffy and... They can't produce, um, it's difficult for them to, I mean, they do a great job, but it's difficult for them to produce the bacon butties and the sausage sandwiches, etc. And what we know is for, to sweat this asset as a venue, then we need to make sure that we can offer fantastic heritage, so we're going to be restoring the heritage back to its former glory, but also we need to make sure that things like the loos, I don't know what, everyone been to the loo this morning? If you've been down there, you'll understand they are not five stars. And people, when they get married these days, they expect this sort of building, but they expect to be able to go to a five-star loo and a five-star bar. And that's what we're going to try and, try and achieve with the investment in this building. Outside the building, we've got a, a £3 million investment in public realm that will start to shift some of that parking out of the front of the building and make sure that it really does look like the jewel in the crown that it is uh, for the borough. Uh, we're due to go out and appoint a, a design team on that in the next uh, month or so. And we've got projects going up Drake Street that are underpinned by a heritage action zone. We've got half a million pounds for that. That's seed money that's to enable us to draw together a programme that focuses on changing the offer that, that Drake Street and the town centre has, using the heritage assets, but trying to make them work for today. That's a big part of what we're trying to do with our heritage, which is fantastic, 
is to not look back all the time, but use it to look forward. Um, and then at the town centre residential offer, as I say, there's not really a residential offer. It's clearly a big part of successful town centres these days. Um, and we've got uh, sites uh, identified for about 2,000 new homes right in the heart of the town centre over the next uh, five to ten years. It's going to be hard to get going, that programme, because we've got, we already know because of some of the work we've done on, on the Riverside development that we've got some fairly mucky land that we have to deal with, and that always makes appraisals a challenge. Looking outside the town centre, things are really happening uh, in the borough. Um, we've got some really, really successful business parks, ar mainly around the, along the M62. Um, Rochdale, Middleton and Haywood all have their own business parks. And we've got, and this is sometimes something that people don't realise about Rochdale, we've had a, a glorious past that's been based largely on manufacturing. And people think that's all been swept away. Well, it hasn't. Rochdale still has 28 million square feet, the most in Greater Manchester, of um, manufacturing employment space. And so we need to still use that and see that as an opportunity to capitalise. Because what we know, Brexit or no Brexit, what we know and what the last recession told us is what UK PLC needs to do to succeed is make stuff, make it well and export it. And that's our opportunity to take take an adva take advantage of that op op option. Um, over the last year, we've had a million square feet of business spa space let across those three business parks. Just some examples. Um, a new arrival in Rochdale is a company called, a German company called Nobilia that makes kitchens. They've just taken uh, space, 55,000 square feet, uh, in, on Kingsway Business Park. Tool Station have just taken 150,000 square feet to create a northern distribution uh, uh, centre at Stake Hill. I think that's got 100 jobs associated, 100 new jobs associated with it. And textile uh, manufacturing is something that sometimes is talked about in negative terms in Rochdale because when we were hit by globalisation, we were also not long after that um, hit by uh, offshoring of textiles. But we're now seeing that A, we didn't lose all that textile manufacturing and B we've seen some of that some of that coming back in terms of on, onshoring but we've got um, Marathon Belting um, and uh, Vitaform get both taking new space 25,000 uh, in, in terms from Marathon Belting and 55,000 in terms of Vitaform and Phil and Darren from Marathon Belting are here today so some of the companies that are doing these great things are represented here. Um, and the latest new build property is for trade mouldings, and that's on Kingsway. That's a 75,000 square foot uh, design and build. And that'll, they're already in, in Rochdale, but that'll treble the amount of space they've got in, got in Rochdale. And they're just some of the highlights over the last year, but, but that's continuing. There are in, lots of inquiries. Kingsway is filling up fast. I'll come back to that in a second. And we're also, you know, there are things that are very much in the pipeline. We're waiting in the next couple of weeks for board decisions from a company, a company in Germany and a, uh, a company in the States. And if those board decisions go in our favour, that'll be another 175,000 square foot let over the next few weeks. Really is very exciting times in those terms. One of my favourite quotes is from a guy called Burnham. Um, you know we've got a mayor called Burnham in Greater Manchester, but it's not from Andy Burnham. It's from a guy called Daniel H. Burnham, who was the architect um, behind the rebuilding of Chicago after the, the fire. And what he said is, make no little plans. They have no magic to stir men's blood. Um, apologies, ladies. It was a long time ago he said it, so he sort of got away with it. And what he said, what he did was he... he changed the direction of Chicago. He, he remodeled Chicago and made it the place it is today. He laid the foundations for that. And we believe in making big plans here in Rochdale. And you've heard about some of those plans started to come to fruition. South Haywood um, on Junction 19 is another big plan that's close to delivery. We've got uh, resources to put in a new link road on Junction 19 of the M62. That will do a number of things. It'll 
Uh, I'll come back to the opening the space up because it's important to recognise some of the other things it does. It takes pressure off Haywood in terms of um, heavy goods vehicles movements. That have a positive impact in, in terms of air quality in Haywood. It also actually relieves to some extent um, Sinister Island pressures as well. So it has good benefits. But the main purpose is to open up new land. It will open up space for about a thousand new homes that will help to pay for extending the road to open another uh, 1.5 million square feet uh, of employment space. That's got planning permission. The money's in the bag to deliver the road, uh, so that will be uh, moving to, we're moving into procurement at the moment and it will be on site very, very shortly. So that's a big-ish plan, but it's not big enough. And what we've done in terms of the Greater Manchester Spatial Framework, that I hope some people at least will have heard of, is we've got a game-changing opportunity with something called the Northern Gateway. And that's a site that we've been working on with um, Berry Council and to some extent with Oldham Council. And it's a site that stretches across the M66 from Berry along the M62 into Rochdale um, and will create a vast strategic employment site that will provide space for the next 20 years when places like Kingsway are full. Um, just in Rochdale alone, it will create 8 million square feet of new employment space. Um, it will have about um, 3,000 new homes as part of that as well. Uh, and it will create a, an uplifting GDP of nearly a billion pounds a year. Um, what we have in Rochdale and what we've got to capitalise on is space and what we have is space to grow and that's very much what that's, that's about. The revised um, GMSF will go out of consultation um, shortly. Uh, it's a horrible planning process to go through but we are absolutely determined that we will open up that site to ensure that we're providing the jobs and the homes that this borough needs in the future and the growth that it deserves. So that's... All I want to do really, but hopefully that input is, is helping you to understand some of the things that are happening. Rochdale's a place that I often say is getting its mojo back. <coughs> it's had a glorious past and this, the, we're now in the green shoots of seeing a really, really positive future. But we need you to help us capitalise on where we are at the moment. We need you to help us sell the message on regional national and international stages wherever we get the opportunity so people don't have a blank page in the head when they talk about Rochdale or don't have more negative stories in the head they just think this is a really great place great opportunities potential for fantastic quality of life for my workforce and somewhere that can really get things done thank you <laughs>